the visionary architect behind the Basutu Legas, a leader who shaped the course of Lesotho history. His reign and resilience, fighting in the Free State Basutu Wars, which can be divided into three wars from 1858 to 1868, from the Bakwena lineage to the Kingdom of Lesotho. Royal and humble greetings to each and every one. Our journey begins in the village of Mengwaneng, where Mushweshwe the first was born, around 1786. Originally named Lepoko, growing up as a young boy, Mushweshwe loved cattle and farming, and having his initiation ceremony at the age of six, marking the beginning of a remarkable journey. Mushweshwe came from the Bakwena, who are the Soto Tswana clan in southern Africa. Known for venerating the crocodile as their totem, meaning respected or feared by crocodiles. Originating from the Bahurutse clan around 1360 CE, their earliest ancestor, Kwena, settled in Tebang, now Heidelberg, by 1500 CE. The Bakwena spread from the Lekwa River to the Kalahari, eventually settling in Tso Anatsatsi around 1580 CE, alongside the Bafu King. According to oral history, both groups, the Tswana and the Sutu, are believed to be related as they share the same ancestor, Mohale. A great Sutu chief called Masilo had three sons who alleged to have established the Kwena, Nguato, and Nguagetze tribes, all of which are Botswana tribes. But in some writings, we will find that it shows that Kwena was the father of Nguato and Nguagetze, and the Tlokwa people were established by Sekonyela, son of Mantatis. Now, within the four major groupings of the Bandu-speaking people, such as the Nguni, the Sotho, the Tswana and the Venda. The Sotho people were divided into three subgroups, which are the Northern Sotho, Babidi, and the Western Sotho, Batswana, and the Southern Sotho, which are known as the Basotho. Now the word Sotho has different theories, some saying it means the dark brown ones. Another popular term was Abashuntu, a word used by Amaswazi, referring to Babidi. Ukushunta, because they used to wear animal skins tied with knots to cover their private parts. Now Mushweshwe was the son of Mokochani. As prince of the Bakwen, Mushweshwe faced the challenges of leadership from a young age. His early experiences navigating the dynamics of his chiefdom laid the foundation of the resilience and wisdom that will define his reign. In 1804, Mushweshwe underwent a transformation initiation ceremony where he was circumcised and was taught the true customs of his people, learned military tactics and was able to compose poetry about himself. This marked the beginning of his rise as a leader, earning the name Litlama, meaning the binder, for his skills in leading successful cattle raids. Mushweshwe's vision extended beyond his immediate surroundings. Through strategic marriages and alliances, he expanded his family's network, certifying bonds with neighboring chiefdoms. This strategy played a pivotal role in the formation of the Basotho people. Mushweshwe embraced polygamy, expanding to 30 wives in 1833, reaching 140 by 1865. This practice served diplomatic and economic purposes, forging these alliances and increasing wealth. His first wife was Mabel, later known as Mamohad. Their deeply affectionate relationship resulted in four sons, Lezi, Malab, Masob, Maraja, and a daughter named Mate. 
His other wife, Maneko, was also influential, contributing to the kingdom structure. Now, according to the popular opinion, and what everybody knows is that the shifting ties of the early 19th century, marked by the rise of the Zulu king Shaka, which compelled Mushweshwa to relocate his settlement to the Kluwana Plat, later known as Tawabusiu, mountain at night, which will later become the stronghold against the invading Guni clans during the defeat Khan. But according to oral history, it was in 1824 when Mushweshwe moved to Kaliwane. Kaliwane was a name given to it by the Bushmen or the Korana, who were hunter-gatherers, as they were moving towards the present-day Free State. After that, the Boers came and drove them to the Kalahari and Botswana. It is said that it was Mutingwe, a hunter of the Bakwena, who discovered the mountain during his hunting trips. Mutingwe then told Mohal, who was a soldier besides Mushwesh, about this mountain after witnessing a battle between the Batlokwa and the Basutu at Kushiyane, where the Basutu were being overpowered. Mushwesh decided to leave Butabute and go to Tababusiu, a journey that took him about nine days, traveling with women and cattle. So when Shaka Zulu was conquering other clans, Mushweshwe is one of the kings that survived Shaka's raid. It is said that when Shaka sent his army, Mushweshwe managed to negotiate with them and offered them cattle and crops. In the 1820s, after facing challenges from the Quran, Mushweshwe demonstrated his strategic abilities by accumulating horses and guns, becoming a affordable lead, also building a wall around Tababusiu to prevent trespassing. In February 1858, tension rose in the Orange Free State as both the Boers and the Basutu claimed the same territory. President Jacobus Nicholas Bosov declared war on the Basutu in March 1858 after discussions with Mushweshwe failed. The Basutu, strong opponents, defended their mountain stronghold Tababosiu, resulting in significant losses for the Boers. This conflict, also known as the First Basutu War, or the War of Senegal, led to destruction of mission stations by the Boers, who blamed them for educating and empowering the Basutu. As the Orange Free State forces weakened, Bosov sought to make truce with Mushwesh, and an agreement was reached on 1st June 1858, suspending military operations on both sides. Mushweshwe wisely accepted mediation, understanding the importance of avoiding unnecessary enemies, despite him having an advantage. After the First Basutu War, uneasy peace followed. Johannes Brand, the new Orange Free State President, negotiated with Mushweshwe, but the unclear frontier led to renewed hostilities. President Brand believed in using military superiority while Mushweshwe sought British protection from Commissioner Sir Philip in 1861. Despite reaffirming the Warden Line, which was named after Major Warden, the Warden Line was due to border disputes between the Basutu and the British, eventually proclaiming the Warden Line. The line divided territory between British territory and the Basutu territory under Mushwesh. Attacks continued, leading to the Second Basutu War in 1865, known as the Security War. Boers used new cannon to crush the Basutu strongholds. President Brand appointed Johan Fick to lead the Free State Army, seizing cattle and destroying crops. Mushweshwe accepted the peace of Tababusiu in 1866 due to food exhaustion. After a short truce, Mushweshwe sought British protection again. Tensions rose as the Orange Free State government delayed the land allocation, leading to border disputes. The murder of two whites in Lady Brand in 1867 intensified conflicts with Mushweshwe disputing the agreed 
Frontier Line of 1866. In July 1867, the third conflict between the Orange Free State and the Basutu unfolded. War forces successfully seized the Mushweshwe's territory, with Tawabusiu remaining unconquered. Struggling, Mushweshwe sought British aid, leading to the annexation of the Basutu land as a British protectorate in March 1868. Sir Philip, who was now a governor, negotiated with Mushweshu, secured the recognition of Basutu as British subjects. The British Parliament formalized this on the 12th of March, 1868. Faced with potential trouble with the British Empire, the Orange Free State halted the war. The Convention of Alwal North in February 1869 delineated the boundaries of the modern Lesotho, meaning it outlined in detail conceding the conquered territory of the Orange Free State. This agreement, relocating the boundary south to Langenberg, marked the end of armed conflicts between the Free State and the Basotho. King Mushweshwe, instrumental in saving his kingdom, passed away in 1870, two years after the war's conclusion, and was laid to rest at Tababuseu. His legacy of resilience diplomacy and personal trials echoes through the Lesotho history, a symbol of strength and a beacon for generations to come. Mushweshwe Day is observed annually on the 11th of March in Lesotho, commemorating his passing. The Mushweshwe Fest International Airport and the South African Shweshwe Fabric, named after him, stand as tributes to his enduring impact. There is also a historical Mushweshwe walk, which was founded in 2007, a three-day journey of about 116 kilometers that aims to rekindle the spirit of unity among Basutu as it is, which is in honor of the journey Mushweshwe took to Tababusiu. Now looking at the Bakwena lineage, where Mushweshwe comes from, it was Gwena, Khapo, Masilo, Napo, Motebang, Molemo, Cholwan, Monaheng, Motwang, Pete, Mukachane, then Mushweshwe, who founded the Basutu Kingdom. Now please keep in mind that the Kingdom of Lesotho has only had three crowned kings because it was considered as Britain property. So the rulers in between Mushweshwe I and Mushweshwe II were just paramount chiefs. Mushweshwe's lineage continued with Lietzi I, Lirithuli, Lietzi II, Griffith, Sieso, Mushweshwe II, then Khosi Litsiya III, who is the current king of Lesotho. Now that was the life and reign of King Mushweshwe I from the Bakwena lineage to the Kingdom of Lesotho. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Until the next one, thank you for watching.